Jamal Bryant has gone viral because of what he said about black people at white churches. <laughs> you don't want to miss this video. Now, Jamal Bryant on his podcast, uh, he was having a conversation uh, on his podcast, and I was trying to remember what her name was. Jesse Wu, he uh, uh, one of his, looks like it was episode number three. Uh, he was on the podcast, and he said something that you know has gone viral. I've seen a lot of content about it. People are talking about it. It's all everywhere because he said it. But I believe a lot of other black pastors feel the same way. They just don't want to say it. But I also want to look at will this backfire on Jamal Bryant? So let's go ahead and get into what he said and what what happened. Let's go ahead and let's go. My leader, she asked me, she would do like this Muppet show. She had a white Muppet and she would, um, her Muppet was white and country. Yeah. She's like, oh, we should get a black Muppet. I was like, cool. And she's like, we should name her Shaniqua. Uh, Just, uh, and like all the stuff she was saying was very like, you know. Stereotypical. Right. Yes. And I said, yeah, so. Well, I got a problem with, with black people that go to white churches. Okay. And I'll, yeah, let yeah. me let me put it out there yeah. because you never see it in the reverse. True. You never see it in True. the reverse. And what I say True. to friends True. of mine who go to them is that they'll let black people on the praise team, let yep. black people on security, yep. let black people preach, but there's never a black person no. in the financial. Ever. Ever. That, Ever. That, that's that's my issue. Ever. I, I stand on that. Ever. I stand on it. So I'm all for we are the world. That I, we one body, but there's got to be some equity on it. I yeah. saw Jesse this crazy interview. You, I'm gonna send it to you. Well, that that is quite interesting. Uh, Jamal Bryant, that's a good perspective. Uh, just want to kind of put that um, from my thoughts, what I think about it. And um, I've had the experience where I've attended on a, a part of a white church, a pretty large white church. They had 200 and some volunteers, you know, for parking team, for the uh, VIP or the connection team or the uh, all the different teams, uh, even for uh, the people who, you know, VIP made you feel special when you came in or whatever. They had a lot of volunteers. They, they were seeker sensitive. They had that whole process uh, worked out very well. Uh, the problem that I noticed, uh, my wife and I became a part of this church. And, of course, we're African-American. I'm a musician, um, you know, um, and we were a part of the church. Now, she sings as well. Now, we were going, doing this church and stuff like that, but I started noticing several things off back. I did. Jamal is right. There was nobody that looked like me that was preaching especially in on staff on paid staff there there wasn't anybody uh the praise team and all of that they weren't paid as far as i knew i wasn't getting paid and she wasn't getting paid and uh but we were up there however when we came i was wondering because i knew when i first came there a few years earlier there were black people on the praise team didn't know what happened and then one day uh, while we were on the praise team ran into uh, after service one of the african-american people who were there and they told us they said well you're you're going to be on there and they will love to hear you sing, but they're not going to let you lead any songs. Uh, they just want you, you know, and they I don't want to offend you. And that's what they were telling us. And I was like, oh, we're not offended or whatever. And I was like, ah, you know, they're going to let us lead songs and all that kind of stuff. You No, no. Found out that wasn't the, they they did not was not. Matter of fact, found out a few times that uh my wife's microphone wasn't even on <laughs> they just needed us on stage we were we were props essentially and i believe i was there musically because they wanted the the kojic sound behind the pastor who was the uh, pastor was a caucasian pastor and they wanted the kojic sound behind him you know to back the preacher up y'all know like i'd be doing on here with myself and so uh I was doing that. Even when I was doing it, it felt a little counterfeit to do it, though. But uh, I didn't, it, it wasn't, so I started beginning to realize that this was the illusion of inclusion. They, they want you to feel like you have a seat at the table, but you don't actually have a voice at the table. You can sit down, but don't say nothing. 
And I remember many times the pastor would tell me, we want our pray, we want this stage to look like our audience. Now, it wasn't as many black people in the audience, but there were some black people there. And so the stage did. However, we didn't have the same freedoms as the others on the stage who were white. And so I, I began to notice that. And instead of calling them out, we just we, it wasn't a paid thing that we were doing. We just kindly just left. You know, we told them that we wouldn't sing on the praise team. We wanted to be uh, back because I didn't want them to just uh show up one Sunday, we're not there, and then there's a problem, you know, as far as we looking like we don't have any integrity. However, we told them that we wanted to not be on the praise and we just wanted to be in the audience like we were originally, uh, because when they found out that we were gifted, then of course, uh, they want you, you know, people find out, they start doing research and find out names that you, you know, different groups you've played with, different things like that, people she sung with. And of course, we became a value to them. We never asked for it. We thought we were helping out, but then we noticed something and I learned a lot of things moving forward about that. But I agree with Bishop, uh, not Bishop, but with Dr. Bryant. I, I don't now I don't disagree. There are churches and all of them are not the same. I don't want to make a blanket statement or paint with a broad brush here. Uh, not all churches that are that are predominantly white are like that. It just happened to be my experience with this one. Um, and, and that is that is the case, you know. And a lot of people will go to black, I'm sorry, a lot of black people, African-Americans will go to white churches just because they don't like the black drama. Now, that does not mean that there is no drama there. It's drama there. It's just white drama. You used to black drama. <laughs> there is a difference, but it's still drama. And so I want to know what you think about this. Uh, Dr. Jamal Bryant did say this. Um, I agree to a degree. I just don't want to paint with a broad brush and say all of them are that way. Uh, and I wonder if this is going to backfire on him because y'all know new birth is predominantly black. Uh, will white people not want to come there now? Do you have, sir, uh, white people in your finance room? Do you? I have no problem with it. If I had white folk that came to me that were faithful in the membership, because you don't just throw people straight off the street, straight in the finance room, just like you don't do that with children's church. You don't, you don't do that. Um, but you know, Will, do you have people, uh, Dr. Bryant, in your finance room? Are you letting white people? And when I say people, I'm talking about white people, people of different races, rather. Uh, and I don't want to I want to know what you think about it. <clears throat> I want to know what everybody thinks about it, because this is one of those subjects, as, especially as it pertains to race and whether our churches are reflecting heaven, you know, our communities and heaven. But if you have white, black, Hispanic people in your audience, your stage needs to look like that. Otherwise, it's going to look like they have no place there. Um, and you don't want that to look like that. So, however, I want to know what you think about it. Jump down in the comments and let me know what you think about what Dr. Jamal Bryant had to say. Let's go.